Hi everyone. Welcome to Tech Time with PK. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a private network on OVH Cloud. Later, we'll also learn how to attach this network to a public cloud server on OVH. A private network is similar to an AWS VPC. It provides an isolated and secure environment to connect different resources efficiently. Let's get started. First, open your browser and go to seatovh.com. That's the OVH Cloud Console. If you already have an account, simply log in using your credentials. If not, you can create a new account by clicking on the Create Account button. Once you're logged in, you'll land on the OVH Control Panel. From the left-hand menu, click on Public Cloud. To create resources on OVH Public Cloud, you need to have a project. Click on the Create Project button to start. Enter a project name and click Continue. I won't be creating a new project now since I already have one in my account. Now click on your project to open it. On the left-hand menu, find Private Network and click on it. And that's how you begin creating a private network on OVH Cloud. All right, now let's go ahead and create our private network. Click on the Add Private Network button. Here, you'll see a few configuration options for your private network. First, we need to select a deployment mode. You'll see three options, 1AZ, 3AZ, and local zones. 1AZ stands for a single availability zone in a region. 3AZ gives you three availability zones, which is great for deploying highly available applications. Local zones are data centers that are physically closer to end users, which means lower latency. But keep in mind, not all services are available in those regions. For this demo, I'm going with 1AZ. Next, we need to pick a region for our private network. OVH offers a bunch of regions. I'm selecting London. Now let's give our network a name. I'm calling it Test Private Network. Next up is the VLAN ID. This helps logically separate different networks. If you plan to connect this network to an OVH dedicated server or a virtual private cloud, you'll need to use the same VLAN ID. I'm setting the VLAN ID to two. Then we choose the private network address. OVH has already pre-filled a CIDR block for me, and I'm going to use it as is. But if you'd like to use a different subnet, you can change it here. Now, let's enable the DHCP server by checking this option. This allows your private network to automatically assign IP addresses to connected resources. Next, we configure the gateway options. If you want to use the first IP address in your CIDR, like 10.2.0.1, as your default gateway, just check this box. I'm going to skip setting the gateway for now. I'll create it later. And that's it. Just click on the Configure Private Network button. It'll take a few moments for OVH to create the network. Our private network has been successfully created. Let's take a moment to verify the configuration. The VLAN ID is set to 2. The region is UK1. The first IP from our CIDR block is used as the gateway, and the rest of the IPs are available for our resources. Any public cloud server connected to this private network will automatically get an IP from this range. Now, let's create a public cloud server and attach it to this network. A public cloud server is basically a virtual machine on OVH Cloud. OVH uses OpenStack under the hood, and these virtual machines are called public cloud instances. To get started, head over to the Compute section in the left-hand menu and click on Instances. Since we don't have any servers yet, Click the Create an Instance button to spin up a new one. Next, we need to choose the server model. OVH offers various types. General purpose servers are balanced between CPU and memory. Compute optimized are great for high performance CPU workloads, and memory optimized are suited for memory heavy applications. For now, I'm going with the Discovery series, which is ideal for development and testing. Plus, it's more budget-friendly. Click Next and choose the deployment mode and region. I'm selecting 1AZ in London, 
since our private network is based there. Now pick the operating system. OVH provides many Linux distributions. I'm going with Ubuntu 24.04 for this example. To access the server securely, we need to add an SSH key. Let's generate one from the terminal using SSH keygen C my test server key. I'll just accept the default file location and press enter for the prompts. Once the key is generated, I'll list it, copy the public key, and paste it into the OVH console. Give it a name and click add key. Now let's configure the server. I'm creating just one instance for now. For the name, I'm entering my test server. I'll skip the post installation script and backup options for now. We'll cover those in another video. Let's move on to the network setup. You'll see two options here, private mode and public mode. In private mode, the server doesn't get a public IP. You'll need to set up a gateway or use a floating IP to access it. In public mode, you get a public IP and can access the server directly. For simplicity, I'm choosing public mode. Then, select the private network we created earlier, test private network. In the final step, choose your billing method. OVH lets you choose between hourly and monthly billing. I'm going with hourly, since this is just for testing. Click Create Instance to launch the server. And that's it. Our public cloud server is now up and running. Let's click on the server name to view the details. You'll notice the server status currently shows creation. That just means OVH is setting everything up in the background. It usually takes just a few seconds. Let's refresh the page. The status has now changed to enabled, which means our server is up and running. Now let's take a look at the server details on this page. At the top, we have the status, which shows the current state of the server. If you power off the server, this status will change to power off. If you're taking a snapshot or performing some other action, you'll see that reflected here too. Next is the region. We selected UK during the setup and that's shown here. You can also view the server model we selected. We went with the D2-2 model from the Discovery series, which includes 2 GB RAM, 1 virtual CPU, 25 GB of disk storage, and 100 megabits per second network bandwidth. You'll also see the cost of the server based on your billing selection. Next is volumes. These are additional disks that can be attached to the server. We haven't added any yet. Then we have the OpenStack Nova ID, which is the unique identifier for this server. It's especially useful if you're managing resources using the OpenStack CLI or the OVH API. I'll show you how to use those in a future video. You can also see the OS image used for this server, Ubuntu 24.04, as we selected. Now, let's look over to the right-hand side of the page for the network configuration. You'll see the assigned IPv4 address and gateway listed here. Below that are the IPv6 configurations if your server has them enabled. Here's the private network section. You can confirm that the server is connected to the private network we created earlier. And just below that, you'll find the SSH access details, including the command to connect and the SSH key we added. Now let's access the server using SSH. First, just copy the SSH command from the OVH console. Then, open your terminal and paste the command. I'm also adding my SSH private key to the command using the I option, followed by the name of the key file I generated earlier. I'm now logged into the server via SSH. Let's verify the private IP address of the server. To do that, run the IP address command.
And here it is, this is the private IP assigned to our server from the private network we created. So now, we've successfully created a private network and connected it to a public cloud server on OVH Cloud. Now let's create another server using the same private network and test the connectivity between the two servers. First, head over to the OVH Cloud Console. Click on Instances from the left-hand menu. Here, you'll see the server we created earlier. Let's go ahead and create a new one by clicking the Create an Instance button. For the model, I'm choosing D2-2 from the Discovery series, just like before. Next, I'm selecting 1AZ in London as the region, since our private network was created in that region. For the OS image, I'm choosing Ubuntu 24.04. Now for the SSH keys, I'm selecting the same key I used for the previous server. You can use the same SSH key across multiple servers. Makes access easier. I'm entering the name of the server as my test server 2. For the network mode, I'm choosing public mode again and selecting the test private network. The same private network we used for the first server. It's important to choose the same private network for both servers Otherwise, they won't be able to communicate with each other over the private network. I'm going with hourly billing and then clicking Create an Instance. The new server is now being created. Let's give it a moment to spin up. We can now see the second server listed on the Instances page. Let's click on it to view the details. The server is currently in creation status. Let's wait a few seconds and refresh the page. The server is now ready. Let's scroll to the network section and verify that it's connected to our private network. And yes, it's successfully attached to the test private network we created earlier. Now, let's copy the SSH command and open up a split terminal view so we can access both servers side by side. At the top, I have the first server and at the bottom, the new server we just created. I'm using the same SSH private key to connect to the second server. I've successfully logged in via SSH. Let's check the private IP address by running the IP address command. Here it is, this is the private IP assigned to our second server. Now let's install Nginx on the server so we can test network connectivity. First. I'll update the package list using apt update. Let's wait for that to finish. Now I'll install Nginx with the command apt install Jinx Y. Nginx is being installed, just a few more seconds. Nginx is installed. Let me list the IP address again so I can copy the private IP. Now I'll start tailing the Nginx access logs using tail f slash var slash log slash jinx slash access dot log. Let's switch back to the first server on the terminal. I'm going to send a request to the second server's private IP using curl. And there it is, we got a response from the second server over the private network. Let's also run IP address on the first server. And you can see its private IP showing up in the Nginx access logs on the second server. So our setup is working perfectly. Both servers are communicating privately through the network we created on OVH Cloud. We've completed our setup. Now let's delete the servers we created. Head back to the OVH console. Click on the Instances menu from the left-hand side. Let's start with the first server. Click the three dots on the right-hand side of the server row to open the menu. 
Then click on Delete. Confirm the deletion in the pop-up box. You'll now see the status of the first server change to Deleting. Let's go ahead and delete the second server as well. Again, click the three dots, then delete and confirm the action. The second server status also changes to deleting. Give it a few moments, then refresh the page to see the latest status. There are no servers left on our instances page. We've successfully deleted both servers. So in this video, we learned how to create a private network on OVH Cloud, launch public cloud servers connected to that network, and verify private communication between them. Finally, we cleaned up by deleting the resources. Thanks for watching my video. See you soon with another one.